Today we're going to talk about six different ways to move a point cloud. We're going to use Python, Vops, um, some Vex, a solver, Dops, and even keyframes. To start, let's delete everything and collapse the parts of the interface that we're not going to use to give us as much room as possible. We'll begin by creating a geometry node, and we're going to dive in and create our point cloud from the rubber toy. For the rubber toy, we're going to use the rubber toy test geometry. Let's just call this toy. Next, we're going to convert this to a collection of voxels. And to do that, we're going to use the VDB, not to, but VDB from polygons node. When you do this, you can either use a distance VDB, which is a hollow shell of voxels around the shape, on, on the border of the shape, or a fog VDB which fills up the geometry with the voxels. We're going to use the fogged VDB. And if you look, it doesn't really look like the toy very much. And that's because it only is generating 900 voxels. So we need smaller voxels. Let's go to 0.01. That looks a little better. To make this easier to see, I'm going to change the display background from light to dark. There, that's easier to see. Okay, and how many voxels does that have? That has almost 900,000 voxels, so that's good. So next, we're going to use the scatter sop to generate a smaller number of points randomly from this cloud of 900,000 voxels. So let's generate 10,000 points. There we go. So we now have 10,000 points in our point cloud. And right now, if we play back, it does nothing, but let's change that. The first way I'd like to move these points is with a Python sop. In Python, let's highlight that. I'm gonna go ahead and just clear this. The first thing I would like to do is to get the geometry associated with this SOP. Every SOP node has an associated geometry with it. So let's get the geometry for this node, the one that we're in. So we're gonna take the Houdini module and we're gonna call PWD, which is from Unix. It stands for Print Working Directory, but that's a nice way of basically saying this node. So we now have this node and we want to get the geometry associated with this node. Next, what I'd like to do is move this point cloud from the origin up 10 meters over the span of 10 seconds. So to do that, we just want the Y coordinate to be the time. So for the time, we're going to call the time method on the Houdini module. And now next, we need to get all the points and we're going to loop over the points and, and change their position. To get the points, you take the geometry object and call the points method. That gives us all 10,000 points. Now we're going to loop over the points. So for, let's call each point PT, for each point in the collection of points, let's update its position. So the position, the new position, is going to be the old position of the point, plus we're going to make a vector where the x-coordinate's zero, the y is the time, and the z is zero. So we're just going to shift it up vertically by t meters as t is time. So now we just need to update the position of the point. So we're going to take our point and call the set position method and pass in the new position. So now if we play this back, we see it goes up. So one thing I would like to point out is if we come uh, to our scatter sop, we created 10,000 points. Look what happens if we create, say, 50,000. There we go, let's now play it back. Okay, that's pretty slow. That's one of the drawbacks of using Python for massive computation tasks like this, and this is not fast. So let's try a different method. So for the next method, we are going to use some VOPs. So I'm gonna use the attribute VOP node and right now, if we play this back, it does nothing. So let's jump into the attribute VOP node. And this gives us your input point here and your output point over here. So this gives you all the data available to you to work with. And it gives you the position, velocity, force, time, UV, etc. So what we're going to do is we would like to take the position of each point and add to it the vector 0t0. That's what we did with Python. To do that, we're going to use the add VOP, where we add two things together. Now, if you mouse over the P value, it lets you know the P is a vector. If 
you mouse over the time, it lets you know it's a float. You can't add a vector in a float. So what we need to do is take this time and change it to a vector. And underneath the vector menu here, there is a float to vector vop. Let's go ahead and cut that. What we'd like to do is say, take the value of time and put it in the second coordinate of your vector. This vector has three, param three coordinates, x, y, z, and we just want the time to be the y coordinate. So now we're gonna take, zoom out a little bit, and let's give us some more room to work with. We're gonna take this vector and add it to the original position. And then we're gonna take the sum and pass that to the output position. So this is the VOP way of saying, take the original position of the point, add to it the vector where the X is zero, the Y is T, and the Z is zero. Add them together using the add VOP and then take their sum and put it in the output. Now, if we come up and play, there we go. It moves it very quickly and smoothly. Now compare this with Python, the Python VOP, the Python SOP, I'm sorry. Very slow and choppy. But with the VOP, very quick. Now the VOP is just a visual way to write code. So if you, let's, let's collapse this for now. Let's give ourselves a little more room. This is a way, each one of these nodes is doing a little bit of VEX. So this is a way for you to create something that works as fast as VEX without knowing VEX. But when you see how easy this would be to, to do using VEX, I think you might be converted. So we're gonna come up here now, we're gonna use a wrangle node. We're gonna use an attribute wrangle. We're gonna run over the points, and this is what we're gonna do. Each point has an attribute called position, P. And the position attribute has an X, Y, and Z value. To access the Y value, use dot Y. So what we're gonna say is we want the new Y coordinate of the position to be the old Y coordinate of the position plus the time, and that's it. Playback, and our point cloud drifts upwards. So this one line of vex is the same thing as using these four vops. So there, we've done three ways to move this point cloud. Let's see a fourth way. For that, I'd like to use the solver node. I believe the solver node is the, the core node that underlies a lot of the dot networks, the dynamics. Dive in, you can ignore the four inputs. We're not gonna be interested in those. We're interested in this one node, and that is this is the previous frame. So this gives us the geometry of the previous frame, and we'd like to make a change to that. So we're gonna use the attribute wrangle, and we're gonna make sure we're running over all the points. And then what we're gonna do is say, for the Y coordinate of this point, let's add, not time, because we just want to add a little bit, we just wanna change the Y coordinate a little bit from the previous value. And if we're running at 24 frames per second, then for each frame, we want to increase the Y value by 1 24th. Now, if we hit play, let's go up, make sure the solver is highlighted. Now hit play, you'll notice nothing happens. And the reason for that is if you come back to the solver and look at this wrangle, we added 1 24th. 1 is an integer, 24 is an integer. And when you divide an integer by an integer, what it's doing is actually returning the quotient. It's not actually doing the calculation you would get if you used a calculator. If you want that, just take 1 and add a decimal point to say we want to work with decimals, not integers. Once you add the decimal point and play back, the point cloud goes up again. There we go. So that is a fourth way to do it. Let's see a fifth way. This way, actually we don't need to, to actually append a new SOP here. Let's go back and now highlight the scatter node. So right now, nothing is, is moving the points. So what we're gonna do, let's move this over here, is we are going to add a dot network. And we're gonna highlight that. Now, if we come into the dot network, what we'd like to do is bring in the geometry at the scatter node and then move it. Well, we'd like to treat all these points as a rigid body. So if you look at the RBD, if you type in RBD for rigid body dynamics, you will see a rigid body dynamic RBD object. That's what we're gonna use. 
let's look at the attributes for this, or the parameters I mean. If you select the RBD object, it wants to know the soft path. Okay, what no, which node contains the geometry we want to treat as a rigid body. So we are gonna use the scatter node. Also, if you come down here to the initial state, they say, what velocity do you want? We would like it to have an upward velocity of one. Now, if you connect these together and play back, nothing happens. That's because we also need to connect a solver. And when you're in a dot network, okay, we, there's lots of solvers. Let's use a rigid body dynamic solver. So simply putting the solver in there says, okay, Houdini, I'd like you to compute how the rigid bodies change over time. That's pretty much what this does. So now if we play it back, it drifts upward. So that is a fifth way to do it. We could create a separate dot network. Notice that this isn't piped into it. The dot network just kind of imports the particle cloud using the RBD object, then says, do a, a simulation, do a sim using this solver. And now I kind of saved the easiest one for last. Let's highlight the scatter node again. No animation is occurring. But if we go up a level, select the geometry node, we could say at frame one, let's add a keyframe at the Y coordinate of the translate. So we're gonna do Alt left click, that creates a keyframe. Now we're going to scroll to the end and at the end of our 10 second animation, we'd like the Y coordinate to be 10. Alt left click again to make that keyframe. Now if we play back, it does move up just like the others, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a, a subtle change to how this happens. Look at the beginning. It gets off to a very slow start before accelerating to the velocity that the rest of the methods produced. And we can see that by coming over to the, well actually let's highlight the geometry node and come to the animation editor. Let's go full screen by control B. So we can see, actually we'll just use the home button to see everything. So this is the curve for the Y parameter. As the Y value changes from T equals one all the way to T equals 10 or frame 240, you can see it takes a, it takes a little while to go full, full speed and then it has a deceleration. We, can, we want this to be a straight line like the other cases. To do that, you can just select on the curve, come up here and click the line. Now if we come back to the scene and play back, Okay, it looks like there was still that slow acceleration. I have a feeling this has to do with some caching. I think it's Alt-Shift-M, brings up the cache manager. Let's just clear everything. Now let's play it back. So if anyone knows how to flush the cache, force a recook so that the changes in the animation editor are enforced and visible, I would be very much appreciative. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon.